Hey guys, it's Garth and I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on Pear Deck and how Pear Deck works. So what I did here is my um, student teacher built this slideshow um, for kids to make a copy in class and basically fill in as they go. So she's got notes at the bottom she was doing, but she had a lot of questions with things built in. So what I wanted to show you is another way to do this. Instead of the kid making a copy, now we could use Classroom and push it out and they could get a copy and they could fill in these notes. So you can do it this way, where it is a note-based class, right, where they're doing certain things, where they're listing certain things based on what they're looking at. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it with Pear Deck and maybe change the way it looks. So you've got a finished slideshow. Um, before I showed you where we hopefully have already done, how do you get an add-on? Pear Deck's an add-on. So I already have it. Um, so I just click Pear Deck on. We know Pear Deck's working because it says at the bottom it's working, and then this opens. Pear Deck has a lot of things you might want to take a peek at. It's got templates. I'm not going to use any templates, but there are beginnings of lessons, end of the lessons, critical thinking. There's all kinds of things you can pick from, little kids. There's already pre-made slides. So like, for example, I've never looked at the social studies. So they've got pre-made slides you can just insert. So you can take your original slideshow and just add new slides that would become interactive. Um, you can look at those and choose to use those. I am going to only work with the where I build my slides. So on the first slide, um, there's nothing here. Um, you know, I could, well, so we've got this title. The next slide says, what do you know about the church? So maybe in the first slide, I want to ask them a written response. I just click the word ABC and it says it's going to build on the slide. Um, an interactive question, and you'll now see this appears. You cannot see what the kids are going to see. You have to trust that it's working. Now on this, they would get a, a picture of the slide, and over here will be a box on theirs for them to write. So I might start when this is projected. You know, what do you think it means dark ages? And just have them write first responses. So we move on. Slide two, she has this. Birth to death. So what have you learned so far at the role of the Catholic Church? Um, I can add a picture to this, which I went out and took just a screenshot to add a picture, because if we're going to do Pear Deck, you want imagery maybe. Now, I can leave the question she gave here. Oops, if I could get this the right size. I could leave the question here, and I could just add another box. That means that they would write their answers in the Pear Deck. So it, let it build. Again, we have to trust that it's doing what it's supposed to. Now this one, she's got, based on the image, what is a sacrament and your thoughts. This is a pretty in-depth one. So maybe I want to do a, you know, um, well, maybe I do a, a multiple choice, right? Now, what it does is it picks up. What do you want to ask them? So if I look at this, I could go back and say, you know, actually this is a terrible one to do a multiple choice on because I'd have to copy these words exactly, and that's not necessarily the ones I want. But, um, you know, whatever. I could have them do a draw slide. A draw slide will allow them to circle something. So it's going to build and say, this means they can draw anywhere on the slide. So I could circle, like I could write circle, something you don't. understand. Now, why did I do that? Well, let's say the kid, we haven't talked about the sacraments, so I want to make this a little bigger. So I'll make it this size. So I'm going to manipulate my slideshow now, and I'm going to make this narrower, so it'll push it down along the side. Okay. Um, let's get rid of this question. All right. I just want them to um, have a discussion, so well, it's in a different box. Boy, this is the problem with starting to manipulate her stuff. I want to just get rid of here. So I'm just trying to delete this, but I can't get my cursor where I want it. There we go. So let's go here and just delete. So it's going to say, the only thing it's going to say now is I'm changing what she had from uh, her comment. So I'm just getting rid of that box in the background. Oops. How to undo. Okay, I'm trying to get rid of this box. See it? So let me click it again and hit delete. Now I think I got it. Okay, so now the kid 
will have a pen they can draw. So I would assume some kids will not understand why there's sheep down here, and they might circle sheep. Then we can have a discussion of what does the sheep represent, right? So by the kids looking, maybe they circle, you know, uh, these are tough words for middle school kids, but maybe they start, circle the word matrimony. They don't know that means marriage or, you know, you know, the Eucharist, whatever. But they can circle something. So I've told them to circle. So now I change this from them writing, what do you think a sacrament is based on the picture, to circle something you don't understand. And we're going to introduce the sacraments this way. Page three says, okay, well, now we're going to go into the sacraments. So she gave him some readings. And you know, I could basically give them another text box. Instead of writing on this slideshow, they're going to um, answer these questions in a box. Baptism is this, marriage is this. Here she's got, what is the sacrament? And she wrote this. What I could do is let's get rid of this. I don't need this box anymore, and I'm going to make it a draggable. A draggable means they move a dot, right? So now I could manipulate this a little different. I'm going to give them one dot. Um, I can change shapes or designs. So I'll be, um, you know, we'll just put a square, right? You can change the size of that square. All right. So we'll leave it like that. That's the way it's going to look on their slide. It's not going to look that way on mine. I could even add another one, an orange one. All right. Update slide. Now as the teacher, my job would be, I could say, hey, um, whichever one you think is baptism, move the red dot. If you think uh, which one is the anointing of the sick, and they would move the orange dot. That's two dots. I could manipulate this and only make it one and just ask them, which one's anointing the sick? How do you know that? What do you see? Right? What's this image show us? But we can make this draggable. So the kid is literally moving that dot like we did the first day. Here again, um, we could talk about Greek and Roman art. I could turn this into a multiple choice question, right? What do you remember? Uh, realism, right? Um, perfect. Uh, I don't know what else do I want to say. Realistic, perfect. Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything else right now, of course, while you're watching. Um, I don't know what else do I uh, Greek, Roman, oh, um, usually young, right? So I could add other ones, right? Um, all of these. So instead of what do you remember, I could start with a multiple choice option. The kids click. It's all of these. Now I can show their answer. So yeah, we remember. It's very realistic. They're usually muscular. You know, we can go through whatever we want. If they don't remember, we can go back to the thing link and they can go look at that art and list some other things. But this is the idea. Now, I'm going to go ahead and present if I present up here, I'm just going to get a slideshow, a normal slideshow. There would be no interaction. They couldn't do anything. This is what people tend to forget. If you want to do a Pear Deck presentation, you have to click this. That says it's opening up your slideshow. Um, I don't know. Maybe I can't get in now because of different accounts. If this becomes a big problem, um, I'll just have to explain it. Hopefully it'll let me in. She made the slideshow, so it may not let me do this. We'll just have to see. Nope, it did. All right. So what it does um, is two things. It kicks this up. This is what's projected when the kids come in. So they go to joinpd.com, and there's a code. Once they type in, which I'm going to do on my phone, so you'll notice somebody joins the class. Okay, so join. I would always, always, always recommend you do this before you actually use it in class because a lot of the times you forget, you put the wrong thing in it, that kind of stuff. So it does help if you um, do this. And of course I put join PF, not join PD. All right, so I'm logging in, it's picking up. I got a code, it asked me for the code on my phone, so I'm putting the code in now. And it should say, uh, there's one kid in the class here in a second. And again, I typed the wrong code. Wow, I guess I'm not very good at typing or texting. All right, now it says there's a student hopefully in. It's making me log in. 
on a different Pear Deck account on my phone. So now it says one student sent. So that's me. All right, so I can continue. I'm already at the, so my phone's showing me this slide. I'm going to go way back where it was beginning, right? And so now it says, A, on this one, if I could get it to stop flicking. Okay, so on this one it says, hey, what's dark, right? And I can answer the question, uh, no lights. So I'm answering on my phone and saying, done. And now I can show responses and I can see that I wrote no lights. That's a pretty bad answer, so I want to delete it, right? So I can literally, like we saw, I can delete it and it's deleting as we go. No education, maybe, some kid puts, right? And you can have a discussion however you want. So you can see it beginning to type. When I go to the second one, you see this, right? But there was a little box I hid that I'm going to pull back up for you. This is the presentation. What does it look like for a kid? So what it looks like for a kid is the slide on my screen is this way, what's projecting in the room, but they have a box to write in. So I'm going to write something, and you'll notice that it tells me there's one student. So if I write... Um, again, I could write controlled life, but you get the idea. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide, and, you'll, and I'll show you that again. So now what it looks like for me, this is the projection. That's what we're seeing in class. But as a student, um, on the dashboard, I can't actually see it, so I'll do it this way. Circle something you don't understand. So I picked red, and I circle the sheep. And it appears. So now as a teacher... Anonymously, kids are saying, I don't understand that, and I don't understand, what is this, right? So they circle it in green, too, it should appear. Now we can have a discussion without embarrassing kids or saying, who knows this or who knows that. We can talk about what's going on, right? But on the projection in class, this is all we see unless I show a response. Now I can see it. There's only one response. I could flip through if there were more. So we're going to go to the next slide. All right, the next slide was a short answer again. So the student, I'm not going to write anything. You get the idea. Again, just so you see it, you see the box there where they would write in. And I'm going to go to this one. So on mine, I have two dots. The orange one, I'm going to move to the um, healing, right? And I'm moving the red one to the base of the baptismal thing. And when we show responses, they're there they would appear for all the kids. So if all the orange appears here, they get it, we move on. If we got red over here, we need to talk. So this is kind of how a Pear Deck works. Um, I got a multiple choice answer now, and my phone is not letting me click the answer piece. So I can't answer that multiple choice. Ironic, um, oh, was this not the multiple choice? I don't remember what I built here. But it doesn't look like it took. I don't have a multiple choice there. So it's on, on my phone. So I might have to go back and look. What do we do on that slide? All right, I thought I put a multiple. See, I never saved. It didn't save it. So I would have to redo that one because that slide didn't turn out the way I wanted. So that, in a sense, is how it works. When you're done with your slideshow, you have some options. You can go turn on student self-paced. That means the kids can go through it and keep working while you're not teaching, right? You can... Um, make it full screen, you can open the dashboard, or you can end the session. When you end the session, it wants to know if you want to name it, so I could call it just test uh, Garth, right? And it publishes a takeaway. Once I do that, um, it's going to save it, and I can share to Google Classroom their takeaways, or I can copy that link. The reason the link becomes important is if I'm logged into my account, and I put that link in, now, it may not work because I'm logged in as my, um, see, I'm logged in as the wrong person, so it's not going to find mine. But if I were logged in as me, it would literally open up a document, a Google Doc, that looks just like this. There's the multiple choice that appeared now. Um, that would have the slide and my answers. The slide and my answers. So they would get a Google Doc with all their answers. That way, if the kids got it wrong, you could talk about, well, it's all of these, and they would see the right answer again. So the big difference, do you want them to fill, make a copy and fill it in? Or could you turn it into a Pear Deck and make it more engaging as you're working? So that's a little bit about Pear Deck, um, and that'll be it for today.